crash and intros. Damn right. <laughs> there we go. Put that in. Uh, okay, so let's start over. Welcome to Table Trash Gaming. I'm the host, Matthias, and today I'm joined with... Hey guys, my name is John. And I'm Travis. And today, uh, we'll be talking mainly about Warhammer 9th Edition. Spicy. Yeah, it just came out two days ago. Uh, stuff's being updated. People raging about stuff. People angry, people happy. We'll uh, nice. see what's going on. Uh, but first, uh... Uh, let's let's start with you, Travis. Anything anything going on hobby wise? Uh, currently building many many lists in the Superior application, which is Battlescribe. Now that it's been updated with ninth points, I, I know, man. That the forty cap is pretty amazing. You know, with like the bugs and everything, and having to be in Alabama to access it, it's pretty great. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Perfect. That's just a feature. Yeah. <laughs> if Bethesda has taught me anything. Totally <laughs> intentional. What about you, John? Um, Oh, I'm sorry, did you have more to say? Go for it. No, 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 go right ahead. I have uh, some working on some uh, custodians right now. Uh, pretty hype about the Necrons, but my paint's taking a while to get here, so working on some some of my bananas. Paint's taking a while, but you ordered from G-Dub? Yeah, it's weird, man. Like it, like it said shipment in eight days, and I checked yesterday, so I'm like, well, there goes my, um, <laughs> my Rune Lord brass and whatnot, so... That's all right. Though. I got the, I got some custodians to work on. Yeah, nice. I uh, I ordered paint. What was it last week? I believe. <laughs> did, it, did it come in yet? Oh no, it came in. Came in. Oh, uh, no. Came in nice and open. Oh yeah. Oh. <laughs> so I got a. Uh, I lost uh, two thirds of my blue ink, as yeah. it was scattered throughout the entire bag. It's good. It's good. Seven bucks wasted right there. Your you watch. Replacement? You should give it. You should give me some. Oh yeah, I, I already sent in a replace. Asked for a replacement. For a nice. Okay. I'll, I'll definitely, hopefully, be getting that. It's that wash that comes pre-applied, bro. <laughs> oh, there, oh, there you go. Pre-applied to all my all the paints next to yeah. it. You <laughs> see, you messed up. You, you should have ordered your minis with the paint, and then it would have just got all tossed up in the oh, same. Oh, <laughs> Travis knows what's up, man. <laughs> hobby properly. The, the old shake and bake method. Come on, dude. <laughs> hey. Hey, you know, as long as it combines with the other paint that it was attached with, oh, it's gonna give that nice deep blue. My mm. uh, my deepkin, because that's why I ordered some skin tone for my deepkin. We'll have that nice blue in the paint. Real, real natty tones. <laughs> oh, there you go. Instead of being um, gray, it'll be a uh, grayish blue to the wash. Just wash over gray models. Oh my heart. Oh god. <laughs> Uh, I've seen that. Uh, uh, I'm still waiting for my Indominus box. Unfortunately, I haven't got a I haven't got a tracking number yet. Uh, good oh. old Rome. I think cancel is go to a, a lot of the G, the GW stores got a, a crap ton, man. Like there was a thousand oaks on the weekend. They had like twenty boxes. Yeah, I know. Uh, Game Ogre had a had a ton as well. Yeah, so. the pile. I'm, uh, right now, I'm currently just working on my thousand sums, trying to get that up and up and ready for ninth edition. Very cool, dirty Magnus, that horrible monster. Oh, oh, you're you're welcome, Matt. Uh, thank you. <laughs> He's uh, he hasn't done me any good except for the one game that I played for ninth. But uh, <laughs> every other game I played with him, he has not done me well. So I feel like ninth. He's gonna finally shine. Mm. How about you, Travis? Any specific factions you're into right now? Um, I am desperately making my corn lists, trying to find something that's gonna work. But you know, it's just because I hate myself so much. That's fair. Yes. I'll flank those corn berserkers, dude. Oh god! <laughs> you get that fight twice. Your enemy gets to go before you. Oh god. Anyways, ah, <laughs> uh, so fun. Is there anything else you want to talk about? Any anything else exciting happening? Um, in terms of general stuff, not too much. I am excited about these all these new boxes and diddles and models coming out. It's just like an endless cacophony of stuff. 
Oh, you bet. I'm excited. I'm excited for the Necrons. Mm-hmm. As as much as I know the Void Dragon is gonna be crap, I'm really excited. Oh no, he's gonna be so OP because he breaks every time you take him out of the box. Oh dude, you, you bet. The, the, the little spindly spindly parts to attach him yeah. to this base. Come on. Oh yeah. yeah. I don't know, man. The the Eidolon, I was shocked that mine is still standing. Or both of them are still standing. <laughs> is that the uh that's the guy who rides the wave, right? Yeah, yeah. So we'll see. A sick model, the freaking um, the boy dragon. Oh, oh the boy dragon. Oh, boy dragon looks nice. So is the silent king, and that's a. Oh, uh, I can't wait. I look at that model and I say, I probably get Paulo paint this. <laughs> <laughs> see, I, I told Matt this, but like that's a sick model that I don't want. I don't know, like I I'm not a fan of the the floating throne. I love the dude himself. The dude himself is sexy. Like mm -hmm. that, that that's a great Necron Primarch, not really, but. Um, I don't. I'm not. I'm not a fan of the throne thing. Um, it's cool, but maybe maybe it'll warm up to me when I see him in person. But Dig it. like the guy, not not the uh, not his chair. No, it's fair. I I like his. I like the like the the pillars. Like the blackstone looks so good. I love that part. Mm. I just want blackstone all over the board. I want to be denying <laughs> psychers everywhere. All right. <laughs> oh, there's a there's a lot of psychic changes to talk about. Yeah, baby. So let's uh let's just jump into the first story that broke today. We got um three new or the oh how would you say three new campaign starter boxes? That's yeah, they're just like a breakdown of the Indominus set, but with you know all the little basic rules you need to do a pickup game. So the first one here we got is the one they say uh you know I uh, basically breaking your friend into the game. Oh. Yes. Here's a little, here's a little crack, you know. <laughs> Have a little taste. A little taster. And we got a, uh, uh, I don't know. I feel not really worth the money. I mean, yeah. we, honestly, we don't know how much these cost. But if right, I want to guess, it's oh, go for it. I guess it's forty bucks. That's my guess. Forty fifty. Yeah, I'm gonna say it's forty bucks. Uh, I would, I would agree with you, because uh, looking at the Age of Sigmar boxes i couldn't find the um what, what was the eighth edition box called dark oh, imperium dark or er, that was the that was the, the fat box. one the giant one yeah did that one have the same thing like this the different supplements yeah they had different names though okay. yeah i don't know no fear was the medium one the the, yeah. the tiny one the name i forget but it had like some a squad of plague marines or three plague marines some some pox walkers and then some primaries. I think that was like 30, 35 bucks. Way yeah. less than what comes in here. Yeah. Because there's no HQs in that one. Yep. No. Yeah. Well, this one, oh, well, comparing it to the Age of Sigmar ones, because that's the only ones that yeah. I could find. I mean, the one that's this size is yeah, 40 bucks, but it doesn't come with a, a Madden terrain. Well, I call it terrain. Kind of just, <laughs> it's like a cardboard box cutout thing. <laughs> right. But I mean, it does come with the board, and, and it does not come with the HQs. It does. It comes with what well, I think it was a lieutenant for the yeah, pri uh, space marines, and then uh, that a lord with a gauze gauze gun. Yeah, I forgot oh. the name of the new guy, but yeah. And they got ten warriors for the Necrons and three scarabs and five. Normal Primaris Marines with close combat weapons, it looks like. Yeah, the Assault. Assault Primaris. Mm -hmm. Those so, sec sexy minus one AP chainswords. Oh man, those are great. I, I would say that these are this is probably going to be 40 bucks. Probably. Yeah. I, I can see it being, I can see like people like us who are knee deep into the game getting it. If like, hey Matt, you want some, you want 20 Warriors and I want 10 Primaris or whatever, right? Then like, I could see like, Doing that trade kind of kind of thing, but yeah, like it was, it's barely anything in this kit. Um, yeah, it's more yeah. like just getting your friends in kind of thing. Ah, uh, see, I would disagree, but uh, let's let's get our thoughts on the next one, which would be the elite edition. Oh baby! So the elite Medium. edition, the grande, has everything from the first one except uh, except instead of a lieutenant, you get a captain for the primaris. 
and you get three bikes. Mm -hmm. And for the Necrons, you get the Necron Overlord. The addition of uh, I didn't really oh. research these names. I don't know what the, these guys are. The the Scorpec Destroyers. Scorpec yeah. Destroyers, and you get a bigger map and a bigger cardboard box terrain. Keep even more shoes in there. Perfect. Well, there we go. <laughs> now, in my opinion, I would say because this would probably be the no, no. I think four. like sixty bucks. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna say eighty. It's gonna be eighty. To, uh, yeah, I think it's gonna be eighty. Those it, those bikes are huge. I don't know if you guys. I don't have you got on Dominus, uh, Travis. Our uh, uh, our friend got it, so we got we did yeah. get to see him build it. Yeah, gotcha. Big chunky bikes. They're yeah, gorgeous they're models. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, yeah, I think it's gonna be eighty. Uh, I did not know that it was the Lord instead of the 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 Necron Lieutenant. Is a freaking Necron Lieutenant. Like everyone's gonna get lieutenants now. You're gonna get a Tau Lieutenant. You're gonna get some like Death Guard Lieutenant. Just wait, guys. <laughs> Lieutenant for everyone. I'm ready. I'm ready pretty, sure real one saloon. pretty sure everyone's got one of those. Oh yeah. Just not um, as much as uh, Space Marines. So this is yeah, but that's interesting because then there's a reason to pick this up. And the recruit edition, if you just want these models and you miss Indomitus, so yeah, it's not a bad deal actually. If if you got both together, it's not terrible. Well, once we get to the command edition, I'll I'll give my reasons why. But in my opinion, this would probably be the best deal to get right here. Oh, okay. But uh, I'll explain why uh, after we uh, okay. we look into the commander. Sure. So let's go to the commander. So the commander. Most likely will be uh, 160 bucks. I'd say so. Because mm -hmm. uh, that's that's the Soul Wars equivalent. It might be a little bit more. I doubt it. Soul Wars had a lot more models. This this is just the Elite Edition with terrain, the main rule book, Commander rule book, and that that's it. This hmm. one, this one comes with the main rulebook. The other two do not come with the main rulebook. Interesting. The other two come with the uh, the book, like right? like campaign. I would say. Yeah, th this is interesting because this is the first starter set GW's come out with with straight up just full terrain. Correct me if I'm wrong, but I think this is the first one with, with like straight up like this is like full screws of terrain kind of thing. Yeah real plastic terrain yeah. yeah yeah the only one i can think of off the top of my head is uh skull pass right oh. like that was a little... well i if i was going with 40k uh, i would say uh battle of mccrag oh yeah there's a lander everyone has yeah that that That's has true. some uh broken like one broken ship or something like that yeah, yeah. huh but in terms of like City terrain wise, that this I believe I think this is the first one that's a starter box, not a like special event box. Yeah, like they did like it with uh Ghost Wars and all the other ones during Eighth Edition. Weekend. Right. This is, this is an interesting box set. I'm just looking at a picture of everything that was in Dark Imperium, and it comes with more actual models. And it came with the rule book as well, but it doesn't come with any terrain, obviously. So that's where the differential comes from. Yes. So. Interesting. So, um, what are you guys' thoughts? What do you? Thinking? I don't think I was actually talking to a buddy about this earlier. I don't think. Maybe I'm speaking for myself, but I I can't see a reason for vets like us to get the command edition. Because yeah. we'd probably just want the models and not not the terrain. I mean, it's it's great for new people, you know, like hey, like start the game, get some terrain, get some some you know kick ass models. But mm -hmm. yeah, like I I just have no. I mean, I have enough terrain to play the games. I I, I don't see a use for this specific box. I would if I, again if I don't get one, I would just get the elite edition. Um, that has like cool bikes and whatnot, right? Or your score pack destroyers. Yeah, uh, I know white scars players are gonna love this box. <laughs> But you, oh. Travis. Well, for if I mean if our estimates are roundabout right, like forty ish, eighty ish for the middle, and then buck sixty for this one is I, yeah, I mean most most people have probably already got the rules on it, you know, on their own. Um, and then 
comes with that's just the little booklet so you can actually get what uh a full another set of warriors the lieutenant and then five more uh assault intercessors and the lieutenant on that side for both those if you pick up one of each of the other boxes for like 40 ish dollars less so no terrain no rules it's pretty i think it's a little bit better i can see myself buying those two in com combination rather than picking this up are you talking about the elite and the the baby one the recruit yeah yeah Oh yeah, it's yeah. That's true. Comparing it to the the command edition, you get way more models for less. You're missing out the rule book, but if you have the rules, you have the rules. Yeah, exactly. And like you said, most people who are already into the game are most likely going to be picking up the rules on their own. Yeah. But uh, for non vets, what do you for think? non vets? Hmm. Yeah, I mean, yeah, this is this is definitely a good deal. I mean, it comes with terrain. You could do it comes with a little play mat also, so you could do like a little pickup game and learn how to play it straight out the gate have all the rules you need right there i mean yeah it's definitely a good deal it's one of the nicest boxes i've seen them pop out in a while uh, yeah, i'd say so um i mean because for me like a, the starter box for any war game you know it's the question is how much of a complete experience is this and this you know this has you know terrain's pretty big in 40k maybe not so much for like and i love age of sigmar but like terrain's not as crucial as in 40k in that game you can have a cool experience without a lot of terrain mm -hmm. i kind of feel in 40k it's 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 very like integral to the experience so that's great to include that for people jumping into the game um having all these buildings and whatnot and there's one kill team rulebook away from great kill team you know so <laughs> that go. as well uh well i mean hearing your guys thoughts on it you you have me swaying a bit now <laughs> but uh uh, I agree with what you guys said about being veterans, you know. We, would, we wouldn't need to pick up this box. I mean, if I didn't pick up a Dominus, I might pick up the command box because, personally, I like the terrain, and I don't mm. really care about the models, so I, I'll take the, you know, the models as well if I didn't get the Indominus box. Mm, but, right. uh, for... Uh, new players, I would honestly just suggest the Elite Box. Yeah. I think... Because the Elite Box comes with everything the Commander has besides the main rulebook and the terrain, but you got small battlefield, one big terrain feature in the, on the side, and you can start your army up from there. See how you like it. I think yeah. that would be the better first person player experience yeah for new players yeah that's fair i can see that because it's not too complicated and yeah. I, don't, I don't unless they got a friend who's already like super into the game you know i think the elite edition would be more uh friendly than uh this in terms of how they would probably play i agree yeah i think the recruit is only really a consideration if you don't have like a game store like a, a games workshop near you because i mean obviously you go in there and they're going to have this set up on display so you can try it out and get hooked on the game and everything so i think it's it's probably a little bit more geared towards people who live in the middle of you know nowhere so they can get each other addicted to it <laughs> that makes sense to you so you're saying it's more like a like the gw uh walk-in uh demo yeah. games it this it definitely looks like it because there's you know it's just like two units two hqs a little cardboard box and that's basically it and the measurements so it's like that's, that's what it feels like to me like i feel like a bunch of the i mean J john you probably know better than me but i feel like they're gonna have this set up to you know lure people into the the sweet sweet ninth edition i'd say so like i think if stores are open they'd have they'd have like all this shebang set up and all this all this on the wall and be like hey guys let's start out um yeah, yeah the, the the recruit because you know I've seen people just like oh this is cool but I don't know if I want to you know blow 160 bucks even 80 bucks for the game and like the recruit is great for that. I mean the models are I mean we all agree like these are amazing models. Yeah, um, yeah. I'm like yeah I think this is great and I I can't shake the what you said Travis of like combining this and the elite edition because that's essentially Dark Imperium if you combine these two minus the rule book. Yeah, it's so it's pretty close. Yeah, yeah, it's 20 Necron warriors. You got your Scorpex, your bikes. Um, 10 intercessors and a couple HQs. I mean, a little bit less than Dark Imperium, but this is a lot of models still. It's a great start for um, these armies. Yeah, yeah. It's it's a, it's a good chunk for both both sides too, which is nice. Yeah. 
And you got two playmats, so you can probably just combine it to do uh, a bigger game as well. That's yeah. fair. Yeah. I will say, uh, John, you made a really good point. It makes me think about it, but I feel like because of obviously new people won't know this as much, but maybe for like people who are kind of coming back into 40K, you know, recircling back around and stuff who want to relearn the game I haven't played since like fourth or fifth edition or whatever mm -hmm. is having the terrain in the largest box in the command edition is nice because the independent tournament circuit and Warhammer are kind of combining forces with the new GT packet. And because the terrain will all be standardized with that, well, using that to learn the keywords and, and get practice in with how the terrain's going to work is, is actually pretty interesting, like at, at the beginning. Oh, okay. So, I don't know. It's, it's interesting. So, all in all, we're saying most likely just get the recruit and the elite. Yeah. But, I mean, yeah, I think three different good packs, and I think each one has a, has a place. Which uh, which is pretty nice because I felt like when No No Fear and whatever the smallest one was and uh, came out for Dark Imperium, I feel like people only bought it because they were like, "Well, I don't have anything else to buy," and people just bought like six of them and were <laughs> stuck with like you know like eight Mephitic Blight Haulers and <laughs> stuff like that, you know. No, yeah, I I, I like that the that, that what you said, Travis. Like, all of them have a place. Like, there's there's a reason. Some it's it's good for someone out there. Um, yeah. For these kits which is great i mean i i, I like i i like the drive and last edition too I, I like the drive towards different size box sets as opposed to just like just get this giant box everyone you know <laughs> so mm -hmm. um yeah gw doing their market research get the giant one. box and just sell <laughs> off the rest of the stuff you don't want <laughs> oh there you go classic too bad uh with the virus going around we couldn't do a, a bazaar i know I'm sure there's plenty <laughs> of people at stores that wanted to just trade off and i'm i think uh we looked saturday <laughs> online and it was just everyone trying to on off their necrons for more space range stuff yeah <laughs> man we get those eradicators dude no no mm. one asking for Ugh. necron stuff eradicator see that's why I'm, I'm biding my time just wait till that stuff's bottom bottom price i'm just gonna scoop it up <laughs> <laughs> there you go all right then um also i think we've got our good thoughts on these yeah. So let's, uh, yeah. let's move on to the next thing. Uh, I had it for the next topic to be uh, Saturday's reveals, but uh, there were some models that John wanted to talk about that had been revealed earlier. Sure. Yeah. So I think the first one is the... Oh, well, my mistake. For, uh, next move would be uh, the Codexes. Obviously, the Necrons and the Primaris Space Marines have been announced first. Mm -hmm. No surprise uh, there. I am excited that they uh, changed the covers finally. <laughs> <laughs> That's so true. Let me tell you, uh, the that amount that smug warlock is on that Eldar one. I swear <laughs> to God, the amount of times I uh, brought my seventh edition book over my eighth edition book is uh, <laughs> is kind of embarrassing. Because, you know, the only difference is the black bars on top of the eighth edition book. <laughs> That's funny. And uh, yeah, it's it's awful. Uh, I like it. I like it. Looks no good. Uh, looking at that binder on the uh, space ring one, it's uh, it's mighty thick. Mm -hmm. Not gonna lie. Well, speaking of mighty thick, did you guys get a chance to see what uh, what people pulled out with screenshots that were in the preview? Uh, no, no, I did not. Heavy intercessors, right? Yeah, heavy intercessors, but also the, in my opinion, the strangest development is that dark angels, blood angels, all that's going to get folded into this to start. Oh, that's right. Yeah, that's crazy. To me, yeah. that's crazy. Having yeah. played space screens for, for that's crazy. You know, it's just um, like, but why? <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, but you see. They said that they're like be blood angels, dark age, they're they're gonna be the sup they're gonna go the supplement route, like the, the mm -hmm. like white scars, iron hands, etc. Yeah. Um that, that's crazy. Yeah, but at this time, uh I do remember reading on the community website that it's still gonna get your psychic awakening yep. stuff still. I mean that's still in play. Right. But yeah, I mean the just only thing I'm upset about yeah. is the, the October release date. That's a while from now. <laughs> that <laughs> that is. Now. That's crazy how far away that's going to be. Uh... Oh, they got 
Let's be real here. They need as much playtesting as possible. Oh, now that it's finally released, a lot more air quotations to your accurate bat reps will start coming out. Mm -hmm. <laughs> start, start seeing the results and what people are going through. Yep. You see, uh, speaking of uh, book screenshots, you see the new Necron Dynasty rules on that? I did so, not. Oh, saw a couple of them. Check that out. It's, it's interesting. Uh, the, the one thing that sticks out is um, Necrons are c probably getting combat doctrine equivalents. Okay. Yeah. Because uh, a lot of the traits were referen referencing to like, oh, you get to use two of, of something, and it sounded like combat doctrines on one turn. So we'll see how well, how well that goes. Um, Interesting. But... Uh, that's good. I I always feel like I always feel like for the Necrons, DW always has this like great plan for them, and then when they get to the halfway mark, they just drop the idea. They always fall flat. Mm. Mm-hmm. So hopefully, you know, they didn't do the same for these uh, what you're calling combat doctrines because Necrons, especially being what I like to call the first Codex curse, oh, they God. really need a boost, especially yeah. in the competitive scene. Oh God! So hopefully, hopefully this does it for them because I know. Uh, 8th edition was... No, no, I, sorry. 7th edition was okay for them. You just had the cheesy destroyer spam. and you needed to carry on and stuff, if I remember. Yeah, oh, yeah. Destroyer spam. Uh, what was that? The Canoptic... No. The Wraith spam. Oh, yeah. The resurrecting Wraiths and everything. The 3-up, three 3-up three Wraiths. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. That was that was pretty much that, and then I, I know Travis really loved the uh, Tesseract Satan. Mm -hmm. The transcendent, yeah. Yeah. Back and... when back when he cost a thousand points. <laughs> <laughs> and then when uh, eighth happened, uh, yeah, yeah, uh, it didn't. Not much happened. So hopefully, again, I I blame it to being the first Codex, but there's yeah, other armies be... that got hit pretty hard. Yeah, we'll we'll see. I mean. As time goes on, it seems that the the competitive rules team knows what they're doing more and more. I mean, I I I don't play competitively as hardcore as you guys, but I follow the scene and it's and I follow the the the, the design commentaries. It seems like they they kind of knowing what they're talking about more. So we'll see. Um, because first Codex Curse sucks. I played Gas Marines for a while, and then that that was a pain in the butt. <laughs> um, until two point zero, and even then it was like overshadowed by like later stuff. But mm -hmm. we'll see. We'll see. Well, that's the. Uh... That's the benefit of working together with the tournament organizers. Yeah. Yeah, let's hope they you know, utilize that to the absolute fullest. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Uh so all right. So let's get on to uh the reveals. Let's do it. All right. So yeah, okay. The first one was the ATV. It's uh Ooh. this little Halo uh knockoff vehicle. Yeah. This is actually uh, was all a big PR ploy because Halo Infinite was being announced. <laughs> oh, oh yeah, you're right. <laughs> so you got your little what was it? What is it called? A warthog? Well, the warthog, yeah, warthog. dude. Oh man, that's what I'm painting mine as when I get it. I can't wait. <laughs> so I mean, what do you guys think? You think this will see much play, or do you think it'll be overshadowed? Uh, I mean, it really depends. It depends on what uh, you know, like how how durable it's gonna be, and because uh, like you know, ninth edition has turned into such a like a control game. So it's like if this guy can zip zoop over, doesn't suffer any minus to hit because of the way the you know minus to hit works now. Uh, you know, it might be pretty useful. You can go pop him on an objective, and he just you know shoots shoots everything that comes in his direction. Might not be bad. No, or disrupt. Yeah, yeah, or disrupt. Yeah, I'm sure. It's got to have at least 10 wounds vehicle, right? Yeah. Or do you I, think I, it's just going to be a big bike? Could be a big bike. Could be a big bike, yeah. Because it's supposed to be the attack bike equivalent, right? That's six wounds. Yeah. I'd say maybe eight because he's Primaris or some weird, weird that's shenanigans true. like that. Yeah, it has to be more than how much is a bike? Like three wounds? Yeah, the new oh. bikes are th three. They're four. 
the four. four. Oh, spikes are crazy. <laughs> but that, so those yeah, are the man. primary spikes. Right? So the primary spikes are four four wounds. Oh, uh, that's nuts. It's kind of cool, you know, like uh, you guys chatting about the competitive side because I'm more of the the hobby casual, not, ca not necessarily casual, but like the more like near, like not competitive side. So I'm looking at this model, thinking of like how it fits to like the design aspect of Primaris as an army. Mm -hmm. um, and one thing that sticks out is it's not a hover vehicle, despite like your repulsors and like your, <laughs> you know what I mean, right? Like you have all these like all these uh, like hover vehicles coming out and the, the hover rhino, the impulsor, there we go. And now it's like, ba-bam, wheeled vehicles, guys, let's go, <laughs> you know? <laughs> Even with the bikes, I was like, all right, back to the, back to wheels, I guess. Um, so it's interesting yeah. that they came out with this. Uh, well, you know, rubber is more cheap to produce than a uh, hover technology. <laughs> not wrong. Not Call wrong. is sponsored by Goodyear. <laughs> <laughs> all right, let's oh. move on to the next. Sure, yeah. yeah. Oh God! Uh, we got we got the <laughs> turret. Hey guys, I heard uh, heard four year olds stop making tarantulas. So <laughs> I, I don't even know. I haven't checked. They can they keep they keep squatting their their kits. So we got uh, I believe it's las cannons and uh, and auto cannons, right? Yeah, yeah. Uh, I mean, I don't know how this is gonna work. Uh, the only bases I have is a uh, filthy Eldar players are weapons platforms. So I don't. I would assume this would be able to move, right? A little bit? Not mm, far. Or is this going to be no. a stationary thing? I think it's going to be like a deep strike and then stationary, if I had to guess. I'm with Travis. It's probably just like the Primaris Tarantula. Yeah, because that's how those worked, right? They would pop up in the middle of the battlefield. Yep. Yeah. Or you uh, either, either deep strike or the, an infiltrate equivalent. Either way, like they would drop in and then just stay there for the whole game. Yeah. Um, I mean... I guess this could work. I just I don't. It's I don't I can't see competitively wise. I mean, other than delaying it and then putting it in a tactical position to hunt down a tank or a monster. Yeah, it's definitely a very interesting like choice to do because it's just like like you were just saying like oh we have all these nice hover vehicles now they're giving us you know dudes with tires and then like the next thing they announce is like something that doesn't even move maybe and it's just like why <laughs> yeah I, i'm gonna echo your sentiment matt from not making really i don't know where this fits in a competitive standpoint again from a from an army design standpoint like this doesn't seem very space because you think of space marines you're like they're marine you know they, they drop hut in they have all these like like they they their, their gunships and all that and then ba bam like stationary defense thing like uh it's kind of strange. I mean, yeah. it's cool. Like, if, I know, I know, fist players are gonna be like, "Yeah, you know, fortify the position." <laughs> like, get like, like nine, yeah. nine of these. Yeah, <laughs> for for real, man. But yeah, it's, it's interesting. Is what I'll say. I'll say for it. All right. Um, I believe the next one is the destroyer. Oh yeah. Oh, yeah. Big, thick destroyer. Somebody's been so, doing their squats. I know. So you get those those uh I think the community article too made a point about the giant thrusters. <laughs> um, like they should. Uh, I I am personally like I am hyped for this model. This is sick. I want three of these if not six. Um that's a spirit. So cool. yeah. And this is the heavy variant. Yes. Yeah. I I I don't know. It doesn't seem like they're replacing heavy. Maybe they will be replacing heavy destroyers. The heavy destroyer kit is pretty old. Like you know, they came out like what third edition? Oh, dude, they're they're axing anyone they're with the glow sticks. I went yeah. on. I yeah. went onto the website today to you know, it's look at the gone, Necron maybe. stuff. It is all out of stock except mm -hmm. for the new hero and the old and the eighth edition codex. Yep. It's a witch hunt. It's a witch hunt. The green sticks <laughs> are cool. I love them. <laughs> I'm pretty sure yeah. they're just getting rid of anything with a glow stick now. Yeah, probably rid of this is probably the heavy destroyer or destroyer, which is fine. I mean, I, I, again, I love it. Like this, like I like the destroyer concept. Like playing Dawn of War, just like these hover view, like hover necrons with the giant guns, you know, um, mm -hmm. long range firepower. Like, yeah, I, I'm hyped for this guy. I just hope he's out soon, because <laughs> right now, like with the uh, with the dominant, it's not a lot of long range firepower in that box. Um, so yeah. Uh. Uh, it's been a while since I played against and played Necrons, but uh, I believe their cannon is the uh, what last cannon equivalent. Yeah, it was like strength nine minus three. Was it like two damage flat or D six? 
I think the heavy one was D6. D6, yeah. It was doing some Necron research um, when the box was announced. Uh, and I think there's another variant. They, they didn't show it. I think it's in the video in the article, but there's another weapon variant for this kit, which is cool. Um, hmm. But yeah, this this is great. I mean, I, I told Matt, like, I, I, I cannot wait for this to come out. Yeah, it's going to be super. I mean, the model's gorgeous. I'm hoping yeah. for... Uh... Uh, I'm I'm curious if they're gonna use this to fold out both the destroyers at the same time, like the the maybe the other variant will be like the shorter range, you know. I would think so because I mean yeah. this literally is just probably uh, how they'll probably differentiate it is just the swap the head and the gun, and mm. then it'll pretty much be the same exact thing. Yeah, because I think the difference between current heavy and destroyers is the weapon option. So. Yep. Yeah, it's just it's just it's good replace it. Which again, I'm fine with rip rip green rods, but you know, <laughs> this is the future now. <laughs> uh, I won't miss the green rods, uh, to be honest. But <laughs> heretics, no. Um, I've, I've got a uh, hundred Necron warriors, some missing green rods, and <laughs> <laughs> the 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 real question for this guy is: Are they going to have a version of him with no gun and some big scythe swords? Ooh. Ooh is going to be the new destroyer lord equivalent because that be so i'm sure they will uh because i don't i don't think they've updated the destroyer lord model no he has a green either. rod based yep. on your theory <laughs> i'm telling you green rods are going away yeah i be, i mean yeah they've already phased out almost all of it at this point <laughs> yeah. all right uh the next one the war of the worlds monster Ugh, so cool. Oh. I I do like it. I'm I'm hyped as well. I I, I love like so my, my Necron army is gonna be like I don't wanna have any of the, the vehicles. Um I'm I'm going for the classic like undead legions and mm -hmm. new monolith I am warming up to we'll talk about later when, when we uh <laughs> talk about the monolith, but like I can just imagine like getting two or three of these like in the back lines of my sixty warriors just like looking all imposing. Um it's mm. it's great. I love this model. Um giant dooms it's yeah very war with the worlds so well uh i'd say necron's got a little bit of a buff in ninth edition here seeing how uh this uh model in particular has a heavy weapon on it being able to finally move and shoot your heavy weapons without any penalty yeah can be very good because that's was always the downside of some of the necron vehicles whereas you know they're all armed with heavy weapons, and they can't. They move. They're at a minus one to hit. Yep, that's true. Now, tinfoil hat time here for a second is mm -hmm. this guy has two versions, correct? The one with the huge, big old gun on top, and then the one that buffs reanimation protocol, right? Yeah, yeah. So, very curious is that both those are the exact same roles as the Doomsday Arc and the Ghost Arc, right? Yeah. And based on our current theory of phasing out everything with green rods, is doesn't the Ghost Arc and the Doomsday Arc, don't the God Slayers on the side have green rods too? Ooh. I couldn't tell you because I don't I have never built it. Oh man. I was a good Googling right now. I don't have uh it. It does not. It has oh. uh painted on green glow. Oh, uh oh, okay, never mind then. I will say that Ghost Arc has a is a transport. I I can see them just removing any like I don't know if it had, if it had like AOE repair abilities in in eighth. Um, I know the dudes inside can be repaired, but that's about it. And I can mm -hmm. see them just sticking as a transport and having the other guy, um, the repair guy, the repair bot being the re the repair thing. But the doomsday arc, because that's literally a, if I'm not mistaken, that looks like a doomsday arc cannon to me. So yeah, it looks almost weird. identical. Yeah. So a lot just uh yeah. just spam in doomsday arcs. I mean, I mean these, to me, these are way cooler than Doomsday Arcs. I, I mean, kind of these three Doomsday Arcs as a model, so th this is great. Again, more long range firepower for Necron, so always a good thing. It's yeah. got three weapons as well, so yeah, you'll you'll Goss players on the on his chin. Man, this is sick. This one. Oh, oh. are the uh oh the preview video the preview Ooh, video that's right? I forgot so... about. This sent you guys this this one's titled unknown uh because uh i looked online i couldn't find any information about people guessing this because i'm really bad at that oh this but, is uh, with beyond the shadow of a doubt something in the death guard range right 
You think this is a death card? I mean, he's got green armor. If you look at his little foot there, it's got like a hole in it. It's got like the slit on it, like that kind of carapace style. Mm -hmm. And then if we go to the second photo, it's got like the brass etchings. Looks like a bug. I and then like his knuckles look like the their kind of cataphracti warped plating that they have going on. Oh, well, I think this is a death card for sure. That the second image is definitely death card. I, I think that's Travis, a death card symbol. Yeah, I think Travis nailed it with the the green leg. I didn't notice that. But look at yeah, that's that's hundred ten percent fourteenth legion. And if you if you look in the background of the second photo, you can actually see the wings from the previous photo. Oh, or whatever that is. It looks yeah, like wings cape to me. Thing or whatever. Yeah, creepy cape of death. Oh well, I guess I I mean if they're both the same image, then I guess that's why I got a uh, oops, and I guess that's why I got hooked up on it. I'm looking at this first image. And I'm like. It's either Tyranid or Dark Eldar. <laughs> so it's probably like a homunculus or something. But it could be Tyranids. But, uh, yeah. Because I, I, uh, I associated that green armor in the background as, like, you know, chitin skin of the mm. Tyranids. That's what I uh, equated that to. It's fair. I can see that. Yeah. But I think the green, I think, nails it. That's that's the Death Guard green. And then the second one, I obviously knew that was Death Guard. Yeah, no, it's uh, it's a corn thing, dude. Corns have a uh, corn has a uh, flamethrowers. <laughs> Excuse me. So, uh, what do you guys want to? You guys want to <laughs> say it is? Uh, uh, I'm I'm in on Death Guard for this. I think maybe a. Oh, uh, I, I know you're on Death Guard. Yeah. I mean, like, do you, do you want to take a guess at what this could be? No? Oh, the particular model. Hmm. I mean it. It hilariously reminds me of like a shock attack gun. You know, it's got like the it looks like a, the hose connects up to some sort of pipe on the second image in the back on his backpack. Yeah. So I'll bet he's got like some sort of big bag of, you know, dead bodies or pus or some weird stuff on the back. And he's just, you know, turning it into goo and shooting it out. So maybe maybe like a. Future maybe lights, like, maybe you or whatever it's called. Havoc equivalent, maybe. Uh, yeah, that's what people were saying. They're saying, well, let me, let me phrase that. People are hoping it's a Havoc uh, equivalent. They're hoping it's a Havoc squad that's going to be released. Or they're saying it's a, another putrid, putrid blight spewer or whatever that thing's called. And, uh, that's a death guard lieutenant calling it now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, all the forms I was reading, they're like, hope to God it's not another character for death guard. <laughs> Oh, they have like fifty characters <laughs> or something. So, I mean, some a, a lot of they have a lot of characters, right? They it's have the new Plague Surgeon many. Two. <laughs> uh huh. It's the, it's another it's the Tally Master's brother, <laughs> the guy who can't count. <laughs> <laughs> the guy <who> can't count. <laughs> <laughs> all right, then. So, all right. Well, that this, answered what, the first one. What's this next image? Is it some sort of? It's a Tau dude. It's some sort of <laughs> so you can tell by the abs. Tell mm -hmm. by the abs of that Tau guy. He's a little sick. That's why he's painted green. But uh, that advanced weaponry. <laughs> yeah, so we got a uh, we got another orc. This is an orc lieutenant. Yeah, that's I'm what. Not I'm... Even, I'm not even joking, or I'm half joking, but that was the that was the thing I saw a lot about the video. You know, they're all like everything in here. Is a lieutenant. That everyone, everyone's getting a lieutenant out of this video. I'm saying, but uh, it'd be interesting to see. I know. Uh, I read a little bit into the orcs for ninth edition. I know they're struggling, so I don't really know how well a lieutenant will do for them. But it, uh, it'll be interesting to see. I mean, the reroll ones to what a lieutenant is what hits. Yeah, we were only ones that hits. Or uh, wounds, wounds. Oh, wounds. Sorry. I mean, that's still good enough, but orcs are having to struggle figuring out how they're gonna get across the board, especially with the just giving them less models. Yeah, poor orcs right now are not in the greatest spot. Uh, I will say though, like good news, orc flares. Necron warriors were redone, so we'll see if we get some new orc boys that aren't from. Pretty what? sure those models can vote at this point. <laughs> <laughs> so 
What if this is a knob from the new kit? The new oh my kit? gosh, that would be amazing. <laughs> oh, and they're big. Oh, that'd be amazing. Oh, that would be great, actually. Much better than Orc Lieutenant. Let's see. Uh, so the next one, uh, I think we all know who this is. This is for sure, Tao. <laughs> Finally, my dreams. <laughs> Say that with the butt that that thick. That ass. <laughs> <laughs> Tao have no nothing on that booty. But uh, pretty sure we can all know that this is Lilith. Lilith. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, she's resin right now, right? She is resin right now. Yeah, that's that's for sure. Like, this gladiator chick. I didn't. I I went online to look for her model. I couldn't even find. Her on the just website. in time to go in with all those overpriced Star Killer models. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't want to talk about that right now. Uh, no. Uh, so that yeah, one's open and shut case right there and then we got the only full image of that video the uh, adeptus sororius lieutenant which uh one of our friends called it uh, i mean what do you guys think uh well let's see what was her name again uh she works under the canon s is what it says on their website Interesting. I mean, the model's gorgeous. I mean, uh, to be fair, all the Battle Sisters models right now are just so good. Oh, yeah, I have they to got, they got fight a good the urge every single day to not succumb to buying the entire range. <laughs> that tempting, huh? Yeah, I do. They're great. The those freaking exorcists are like, oh god, doom organs. I mean, let's let's be real here. Well, you can never beat the doom. <laughs> those are always beautiful. So I will say is there's actually a model missing from this our little image gallery here. Oh, yeah. What there, did I, who did I miss? The Admec character. There was an Admec or, character. Or Admec model. I shouldn't say character. I have no idea if it's a character or not. Oh. But yes, it's right right between the dark the Lilith and uh, and the orc. Really? I guess. I guess it just. Oh, the axe. Okay. Well, that I thought it was just the orc boy's axe. No, 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 no. So if you go to uh, right behind Lilith, keep on going. It's at eighteen seconds. Eighteen between eighteen and nineteen oh, yeah, seconds. Yeah, there was the admech guy. That that's probably lieutenant because he looks like he has a skitari gun, right? Mm hmm. He's got like something draped over his shoulder, and then he's got like the staff in the background. Oh, you're right. I did miss him. But yeah. yeah, let me pull this over. But also in the orc boy in the background of the axe of his photo, there's like something pinkish red with what looks like dra like dinosaur spikes. I'm just saying squigs, something squig related is coming with that. <laughs> Probably know. another a new model of the orc boy with the uh, uh what's it called? The orc boy with the tax squig. If if they unveil uh, a gargantuan squigoth in plastic, I'll drop everything else I'm doing and play orcs for the rest of ninth edition. The, uh, checking Hot Forge World site if that's still a thing. <laughs> there we go. I got a. Uh, there is a regular squigoth, but who knows? Who knows? Bum bum. Trigon. Trigon used to be a Forge World model, so there is precedent. There's always hope, boys. <laughs> cool though but yeah it's uh i think this is one of the best teaser videos they've had in a while because it's one of the first teaser videos where it wasn't like blatantly obvious what was coming and it's not all just primaris stuff <laughs> yeah or one faction it's kind of cool seeing everyone getting something i think that's that's great i'm surprised yeah. they didn't throw in a primaris lieutenant so we gotta <laughs> we gotta give all the plebes their time in the sun you know oh you bet i mean they did it with the releasing abaddon right i mean granted yeah, he was dead plebes. but <laughs> uh what a great reveal all right um so there's was more revealed that saturday so we got the uh we got the necron monolith revamp in all of its glory all right so when i first saw this at that that leaf image uh that gw cleaned up and showed everyone uh, i was like whatever new monolith you know i'm sticking to my, my my infantry dream but i saw this and i'm like okay Having a better view of this, this is uh, this is damn cool. I can see myself getting this. Yeah, this is actually I didn't notice in this photo. There's what looks like a wraith, 
behind the orb of energy back there. Yeah. yeah. And cooler still is the four guns are not the gauze guns of normal. They look like the Dooms uh Doom Scythe laser guns. Yeah, that's cool. Oh baby. I don't believe the rules have been out for these, right? No, no, no. I wish, but no. Probably mean the codex. And taking a closer look at it, it looks nice. Oh god, please be good. Please. Yes, that's the thing, right? No, <laughs> I, I, I think good. Unfortunately, the monolith hasn't been good at all. Since 4th? <laughs> no, not even in 4th. Because remember, 4th edition, you had the phase-out rule. So taking oh, this was true. a... That's true. Taking this was a huge risk. That's true. <laughs> I killed one warrior. All right, I'm going to go home. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, the only advantage it had, like, 4th and 5th edition, was the fact that it was living metal, which means it didn't suffer... The shaken and stun effect. <gasps> that was it. It was immune to melta too, no? Well, uh, yes, it, it didn't. It also yeah. didn't take a lance effect either. Mm. Oh, okay. Gotcha. So that was it was always armor fourteen all around. Nice. So even my uh, even my bright lances, the best they could do was do oh, a boy. glancing hit. Oh man! Also, it looks like the inner chassis is made out of blackstone. I, also, I was gonna mention that. So screw you, psychers. Oh, please. There's hope. There's there's a dream. Maybe like, if this is a monolith with like three denies or something, maybe it'll see play. I don't know. <laughs> I mean, if it has the potential to uh, disrupt psychic, because that's a that would give Necrons a pretty good competitive edge. Yeah. If they spicy. had some psychic denial, if the monolith did that, because of, you know being black stone and all, that. I don't know. Maybe maybe people would run it. It would it would still have to be based on the weapon stats and its movement speed and mm. uh, how many wounds it has. Because I can tell you, even though it'll most likely just deep strike in, that six inch move isn't gonna cut it. <laughs> oh baby, I will say though is uh, I've been messing around in tabletop simulator. Uh, just set, doing some deployments with the new the new GT packets just to see how they how they fit with the new measurements and everything. And my goodness, the, the it's so much less space. It's wonderful. Yeah, did a good job with the books. Yeah, I love having the the smaller table size so far. Anyway, I think it's really going to be hey, going mean, to shake everything up. John and I uh, we played a thousand points on that board. Was uh, that board was small. <laughs> I was not expecting that was, that. that was pretty tiny, um, which I like for that small size of a game, a thousand points. Because before you would just use the same as a two K game, which is ginormous. Mm -hmm. um, so I, 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 that's something I will say I like about Ninth is the the specificity of missions in regards to the size of the game you're playing, it makes for a way better experience. Yep. All right, and then the last thing to get revealed was the new Predator variant. Um, Ooh, Almost won a couple seconds there, but that's some new Primaris stuff. That was close. Oh, man, you're right. <laughs> I, was, I was sweating there. Uh, let's just uh, quickly go over this, because, I mean, it's, it's a tank variant. It's basically the Predator replacement. Who knows uh, if it'll see play. So we got the uh, Valiant. It's like a twin LAS cannon on top. and Yeah, members. that's that's the LAS Talon, which is the 24-inch range version. That's yeah. pretty short. So it's yeah, it's, that's going to be a get up in your face and nuke tank, nuke tanks version. Now those flamers or are those meltos? Those are meltos. It's, or it's definitely sure. a. Uh, I hope they're meltos. <laughs> it's a definitely hit hard kind of tank. Then we got the uh, Reaper, uh, the Storm Bolters, the uh, mm. Gatling guns, twin Gorgeous. Gatling guns. Love it. This one I see will see, I may see the the least play because I don't know. Again, I don't play competitively, but you know I played enough to notice that like Primaris don't have a problem with anti infantry. Mm -hmm. and it's usually, I mean, the way I do it is uh you know volume of dice. You don't have to yeah, right. hit. You don't right. have to hit hard to, you know, kill stuff. Throw enough dice at them, they'll fail eventually. That's true. That's true. <laughs> they roll that one right. Yep, and yeah, then exactly. the, the last one we got is the Lancer. 
it's a uh, I don't know it, I, I see it's just there yeah it's just the baby repulsor um you know uh it's just got single storm bolters and then it's got like a long range anti-tank gun on it yeah so all in all how would you guys say about the uh uh the sunday's pr or saturday's preview excited eh. oh i'm i'm really excited i think they missed a huge opportunity to have one of these gladiators with a really big flamer on top and it was all painted red and said the word b-a-a-l next to it but you know maybe maybe bloody just gonna get a gonna get the villain that'd be cool yeah that'd be that'd be super sweet but i mean yeah all this looks awesome the kit whether you you know need it or not and i think the kit looks great um the monolith is really cool all the new characters are going to be super awesome I think it's a it's a good it's a good hype build, but I'm worried about how much hype they've built up and the fact that the first codex is not come out until October. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah, monolith, the monolith, the I mean all the all this Necron stuff you're talking about, the heavy destroyer, the the Doom Stalker, the, oh, those are so sick. But yeah, like if I'm gonna be waiting like three months, um, I don't know. Oh, really wish I was out sooner. I mean, hope may, maybe they could pull them out sooner and then just have the rules in their, you know. Their box or something. Isn't that what they usually do? They sell the models a week early before the new rule book comes out. So you buy all this stuff and then the book comes out like, oh man, why did I buy all this? This is all junk. <laughs> Put that next to my other paperweight called the monolith. Oh my gosh. It was just uh, the old monolith. <laughs> I have that old monolith. Good old orc vehicle. Yeah, the hot tub. Oh man. All right. Oh. Since that's that, let's uh, let's, let's jump into ninth discussion. Yeah, I don't um, I know I played John one game. Mm -hmm. I, I I probably have the most games. I don't know yet. I haven't asked you guys your experience. Let's let's start with you, Travis. Have you played any ninth? Uh, I actually started my first ninth game today. Uh, again on TTS, uh, setting it up against a uh, a buddy of mine who I was playing eighth with on TTS a lot. Um which is tabletop simulator for anybody that doesn't know. Um, but uh, yeah, we're actually, we were like right in the middle of it earlier today. So uh, it's, it's going interestingly. I'm trying corn out. Um, the first most obvious impact other than, like I said, table size, which I really like is the new terrain rules are really interesting. Um, Cause I run corn Lords of skulls and having uh, a little five inch, you know, building that counts as going all the way up into the sky for me is very, uh, it's, it's interesting to have to deal with. <laughs> <laughs> what about you, John? I actually played a game yesterday um, with a buddy. I uh, played some some demons and I played some custodies. Uh, played a thousand point game. Um, and the small size, I got charged turn one by corn demons. Um, <laughs> it's normally scary, but, you know, with the golden banana, they could take anything, which they did. Um, lost, lost, lost my psychic terror instantly, but uh i think the the way objectives were set up i really like about ninth um having like the itc style secondaries is great uh because there was a point where i was kind of smashing my buddy's corn um in close combat which is bizarre but it's custodians right but he was racking the points because he he outnumbered me quite a lot quite a bit um and thanks luckily with thanks to a few good rolls i was able to uh to wipe him before the game was it was too late right but i did like that that um away objectives were that you know he was losing models but he was racking up those points and i didn't and that rarely happened for me playing eighth um so I, I like that kind of change where like you know it's it's more than just like throwing weight and like grinding them down and it's like gotta be mindful of like the points you're scoring you know mm -hmm. yeah the uh it is gone I would say almost completely away from just trying to kill your opponent completely now. Eighth edition, especially with the ITC rules. Uh, I mean, depending on how you played it, ITC rules, you could do a lot more killing as your objective than trying to hold objectives mm -hmm. in game. I mean, ITC implemented the. Uh, Score point for holding an objective. Score point for holding more objectives. 
then it started changing up the game. But uh, now with the secondary objectives, it's more... I, I feel like the killing isn't really there anymore. You wouldn't really yeah. want to be going for the killing objectives unless you, you just know your army's going to smash. Yeah, I right. agree. And that's cool. I, I like the variety in the gameplay. Oh, yeah. I, I like how now uh, for psychic abilities, you, can, you have a chance of scoring points that way. Oh, yeah. You had your, your, your squad leader just interrogating um, Strike for like five turns. That was pretty funny. Yeah, just score up three points that way. And, yeah. uh, and scoring points. Oh, my God. It's <laughs> oh, like the, the jump between how many points you can score from 8th edition to 9th edition? Like, holy uh -huh. shit. A hundred? What? <laughs> yeah, 105 turns. I thought it was like a just-in-case kind of thing. Like, it's very doable from, yeah. from the two games I played. Uh, and I'm hyped, but like, my, my 2k Necron list is going to have 60 warriors, so hopefully, like, you know, not just not dying, you know, coming, you know, making those reanimation protocols. Like, yeah, that, that's going to be cool. Yeah. Yeah, and then just to go back to points for really, uh, really quick here. Mm -hmm. I mean, the I don't know because I I only played two missions. Mm -hmm. The two missions I played, you know, you control two objectives and more. You get fifteen points a turn for. I mean, that can that can stack up really fast, and you can score that every turn. Where in your with your secondaries, you're capped at fifteen. There's a game I played a week ago, two weeks ago. No, a week ago. Against our, our Death Guard friend. And mm -hmm. by the end of that game, got, I was, it was like 75 to 20. It was, I was shocked at how, how many points I've scored that game. Yeah, it's, um, it's cool that each the the having the 100 max points is like gives like a really nice granularity to it um because you know it's it's not just like the oh i missed one point and now it's this massive shift it's like you know there's all the different primaries for all the different missions have like the the little bits little bits and bobbles that like uh, you know you can score less points for doing it this way but you can score more points this way and there's a lot of risk and reward to everything and it, at least based on what i've read so far and it it all looks really interesting Um, I found uh, out some horrible news, unfortunately. Oh, okay. Uh, I've scoured the internet, and uh, unfortunately, it's looking like a. Uh, unless I can find it to the contrary, that uh, Ray Knights and Thousand Suns are gonna be taking part in the plus one to their smite rules now. Did they negate out the last FAQ that had it? Uh, had it in it? Uh. Pretty sure it was in the the big fact, wasn't it? I am not sure. I don't think it was too. I play corn. I don't even know what psychic powers. Yeah, are. I don't play those army. <laughs> yeah, but um, I'm level thirty k. I don't have any of that. Uh, which actually is a good point. Uh, you brought it up uh, earlier about like the having the new section of secondaries that you can use to do with psychic powers. They actually have one that in that little uh, column as well. That's if your army contains no psychers. You, there's a little objective you can achieve by destroying the enemy's psychers, which is, is uh, as a corn player, I like, appreciate. Yeah. yeah. As long as you don't have them, but again, you're corn, so. Yeah, exactly. You know, all six of us that do this to ourselves, along with the six other Black Templars players out there. <laughs> <laughs> Who knows, man? That new Space Marine Codex might have like some stupid, crazy Black Templar stuff. Oh baby, yeah. I mean, uh, there's. I feel like there's going to be a, a surge of w whether they're going to be on the upper echelon of players or not. But those, uh, what are they called, Blade Guard veterans? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, I mean, those. If you're not painting those as like Blood Angels or Death Guard or, or uh, 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 Black Templars, I mean, what are you doing, right? <laughs> <laughs> See, I'm doing mine as uh, as Dark Angels. I'm using some of those Heresy bits with the winged helmets. Are you doing uh, like a Deathwing style, or gonna uh, go I'm gonna so because the lion's coming out, I'm gonna do uh, the the classic heresy black scheme and just kind of pretend that Primaris were there all along. <laughs> uh, oh, okay, nice. Yeah. When you say the lion, you mean 30k or 30k lion, okay. not 40k lion. He 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 is alive yeah. in the lore, but no model yet. Speaking My of heart. that, but with corn, I mean like 
Magnus is a model, Mortarion's a model. You know, it's it's a matter of of time, and Angron's gonna be out, so that's gonna be sick. Well, Ang there were Angron rumors that uh, uh, Angron was mentioned in the ninth edition rulebook. Yeah, there. Here, but here's story the story wise, now. not like... after after Gene Stiller calls, anything could happen. I think. True. Well, funny that you brought up Gene Stiller cults. Uh, how are you guys feeling about your army points being increased? Um, Feel like your army's good? Could have been worse? Could have been bad? For corn, I think it definitely could have been worse, but I mean, we're not good to, you know, straight out the get go. We don't have, it's, that's just like a unit thing. So, like, you know, almost everything went up a, a couple points. I, I like how little the Lord of Skulls went up because I can still fit two or three of them in the list, which is nice. And especially on a smaller table, they it's like, you know, good luck running from them. There's nowhere to go. Yeah. Um, but uh I think the the biggest change for, for the army that, that, that sucked for them was the Supreme Command change. <laughs> oh. Uh, it's just like, oh, okay, well, now I have to take three or one. And it's just like, oh, that's awful. <laughs> but I mean, you know, uh it's, you gotta change it. It's just, it's a whole new edition, so I just gotta, you know, get used to it start thinking with fresh new list ideas which is impossible but i'll try anyway i'm right there with you i mean i gotta my whole dark eldar they gotta they're gonna have to learn to adapt probably gonna have to go on mono mono i don't know how you say coven or cabal i have to pick between those yeah Patr i don't feel like i can do enough but patrols are the new hotness though keep that in mind well it depends right tournament scene are they going to limit us on detachments even though i highly doubt anyone could take more than two uh well it's the the official ruling in the gt or whatever is that for a strike force two thousand points is the number of detachments you can have is three so i don't know if, i think uh, it was if i recall i don't have it in front of me if i recall it was take four patrols to get like eight cp Oh, okay. Yeah, then maybe not that in particular. But, so, but it is nice because uh, you don't need troops as much anymore, so you can just take patrols for the 2 CP, get one free or whatever. I mean, or you can limit yourself to a battalion, but patrols seem to be where people are leaning for, like, that teching their list around stuff and keeping the, the multiple detachments in. So I'll, I'll take a look. Back to your original question. I mean, I play Custodies, and apparently they got buffed, so points department, so... Yeah. <laughs> or got hurt the least, so it's gonna I'm be. Happy. I guess I'm happy about that. Banana slaps everywhere. Oh yeah, banana slaps everywhere. I heard the Terminators went down. I'm reading some articles, so uh, I'm gonna be picking up some of those forge. We already have a bunch of the uh, the plastic ones, but I'm gonna grab some of those beefy forge old Terminators. That sounds gross. The ra rapid, uh, rapid fire, two heavy bolters with a double tap stratagem. Yeah. <laughs> Right. Um, I think we'll end off with this question. Of, uh, you guys have something else you want to add? Uh, but how do you guys feel about five turns now instead of the normal six turns? I know in casual play in eighth edition it was five turns with a random turn. Tournament play was always six turns. Mm. Now, now we're being reduced down to five permanently. How do you, how do you guys? You think it's a good um, change? You think it's the whatever again, change? I think it it falls in line really well with what they've expressed to be a desire to compact the game, um, make it smaller and a little bit smaller, a little bit tighter, a little bit fast faster, quote unquote. Um, but I like it. I, I mean, the like I said, the game I'm in the middle of playing right now is like really really brutal. There's not a lot of, especially with the way you score points. There is not a lot of like, okay, I'm just going to sit back and wait for a really long time, and then you come away far out, and then I blow you up, and then the game's over. It's like everybody has to act kind of immediately, uh, which seems like it's going to make for some really intense, really close games. So, I mean, yeah, I think it's a good rule uh, so far. But again, you know, uh, time will tell with, uh, with a couple more practice games in, for sure. What about you, John? How you feel about it? Uh, I hate random turns, so <laughs> I think it's great that <laughs> um, having played War Machine and playing Star Wars Legion right now who have, who have fixed turns um, and playing Horus Heresy with random turns, which annoys me. I, I enjoy the, the predictability of that. Um, 
I'm not saying randomness isn't fun, but I think something that integral to the game state, which is when the game ends, I think having that fixed point is good for strategic planning um, when you're playing the game. And I'm like, kind of sucks, right? Because you're planning something like, ba bam, just kidding. But, you know, you were hoping for another turn, but yeah, guess what? I said no. Mm-hmm. So, well, that was the whole thing with uh, seizing initiative, right? That was, oh, I yeah, hated they, that oh, rule. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I hated seizing. I mean, uh, it's a meme at this point in my gaming group, but I freaking hate seizing initiative. <laughs> of like, you're setting up and then, ba bam, there's the six. You're, you're going to get shot off turn one because you didn't, because you, you know, you're, you played aggressively thinking you're going to go first. Uh huh. Well, so. you can still do that now. It's just now it's more even because it's just a roll off back to like, Fourth, fifth, right, sixth right, edition. Right, which is I think is way better than freaking season initiative. <laughs> um, I well, you guys have anything more you want to add? Um, as a small note, it looks like the rule. Uh, just to jump back to the the psychic powers with uh your Grey Knights and Thousand Sons. Uh, it depends on if they change the psychic focus rule. I haven't seen anything. I um, haven't seen and- any mention of the psychic focus rule. As and of right now, as of big FAQ two, which is pretty old, but you know hasn't been changed in a while. Until they get rid of invalidate that, you technically still have it via via this. I would say, take that with a grain of salt, but that's what it looks like. All right, I will scour the internet more, but we'll see what happens. I know right now in the main core rulebook, right now they have that you can only cast smite once a turn, so. I'm pretty sure that's getting it, or has been FAQ now. Yeah, I, th- I think it was. It was people. It, I think people were mixing it up with being able to cast Smite multiple times across your army and being able to cast it multiple times with the same unit. Because they, I think people got the wording a little bit wha- whacked because you know people love to abuse the rules as much as possible. It's a, I mean, it's a big thing in competitive. 40k. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I don't blame them. You know, if it's broken, it's broken. You got to fix it. But uh, some stuff's like, come on. <laughs> what are you, John? In? Any closing words or anything uh, you want to say? Mention? Give a shout out to the Crusade mode. Um, I, I played Necromunda and Warcry, and uh, having a, a campaign system that isn't encyclopedic and uh, pretty balanced for just like pick up games with your friends is great. So, everyone who. Uh, was was glancing through the narrative rules because narrative has always <laughs> been glanced over for the most part. Check it out. Uh, it looks really fun. You can do the level up. They get like minor but flavorful bonuses and doesn't seem overpowered or anything. Um, okay. Pretty happy about that. So Yeah, we might might do a little Crusade Bat reps yeah, in the future. Yeah. yeah, let me know about that. I'd be very interested. Yeah. Crusade, Crusade looks awesome. Just don't buy the journals. They look terrible. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm, I'm pretty mine up. I mean, <laughs> smart. <laughs> <laughs> so waiting for the release, release the uh, the PDF, or I could bring my rule book to work and use the copy machine. <laughs> That's fair. That's fair. Just so use the other resources. Don't use your own. <laughs> well, all right then. Uh, I think we had a pretty good talk. Uh, I think this is a good time to stop. Maybe uh, next time we'll go more in depth after we've fully comprehended the rule book. Mm-hmm. Some rules, and uh, knows maybe we'll have a couple games that we can talk about as well. Absolutely. So, yeah. I think I think we're gonna head off here. Killer. Thanks for joining us on our first podcast, and uh, do this again next week. All Still right. working on the schedule. Sounds good. <laughs> uh, we'll see you guys next time. All right. Have a good one, guys. Thanks again, right. Matt. Bye bye. No problem.